Recently, we discovered the reality of the enormous task of maintaining the Chateau's vast network of ancient stone walls. And we also share with you an ingenious landscaping feature incorporated into the walls, giving Pernon one of its most breathtaking features. This mesmerising view. When Chateau de Pernon was constructed at the end of the 18th century, her owners chose to place the chateau itself on the high ground so that all her terrain would drop gently away. This decision enabled Pernon's most remarkable feature, her outstanding views, including this view of the Grand Allée, the three kilometre passage that dissects the Skivore Forest. It's a private view that can only be enjoyed in its totality from here on the Gordonneur. And by a clever trick or trompe l'oeil, the slope of the land gives the impression that the Grand Allée extends all the way to the front of Pernon's 1812 gate. But this incredible view would be lost to us if it were not for an ingenious design feature built to safeguard Pernon's extraordinary views. You see, not surprisingly, the domain is surrounded by kilometres of stone walls. Originally designed to protect the privacy of the chateau and keep the wild animals out and domestic animals inside. The walls are typically two to three metres high, enough to block the perspective of the surrounding countryside. And so, in key places, Pernon's architect constructed a ha-ha. It's a sunken wall that protects the view on one side and maintains the barrier on the other side. The name Ha Ha is thought to have stemmed from Louis XIV's son, the Grand Dauphin, when his governess prevented him from approaching the Ha Ha out of concerns for his security. And when he did approach, he said, Ha Ha, this is what I'm meant to be afraid of. Others say it stems from the reaction when you see a Ha Ha for the first time and realize the genius of the design. And your first reaction is, Aha! Regardless of the origin of the name Ha Ha, here at Pernon, our three ha-has, and especially this one right in front of the chateau, are an extraordinary feature that really accentuate the beautiful natural setting that this property sits in. The ha-ha here on the eastern side of the chateau behind the orangerie is quite different in its design to the ha-ha at the front of the chateau and that potentially is because essentially its purpose is different. The ha-ha at the front of the chateau is about how the chateau is approached so no pedestrians or vehicles and at the time horses and carts could enter without coming in through the front gate. It's really about security. Here however I imagine it's more about the wildlife and preventing the deer and the sanglier from entering the property. And unlike the ha-ha at the front of the chateau, the ground level is actually the same. You can see the farmer's field does not drop away, but there's actually a ditch. And so we get this uninterrupted view with the land at the same level, but it's impossible to enter the property from the side of the farmer's field. 
Tru seems to have a new trick, walking on the ha ha. I'm not sure that's a good idea, Tru Tru. Quite overgrown ha ha behind me here is Pernod's third and mysterious ha ha. The other two ha ha's are all about providing an uninterrupted view whilst providing security to the property. Whereas this ha ha, as you can see, sits more in the woods of the chateau. The stone wall on either side is actually collapsed, but the ha ha itself, aside from some trees growing up through it, is actually in quite good condition. But behind it in the woods, there isn't anything that would benefit from the view of having a ha-ha here. So there's clearly something that we're yet to understand about this wall, this ha-ha, and why there is a ha-ha here in the middle of the woods. But recently we've started the task of devegetating our stone walls and preparing a strategy to protect them. So we've worked with our stonemason on devegetating and rebuilding a section of the wall on the western side of the chateau where the stone wall had fallen down in three places. And we've devegetated the top of the wall so that he can put a lime mortar across the top to protect the wall from water infiltration over winter. And gradually, over time, we will start devegetating all our stone walls and protecting them. However, there are also very extensive sections where the walls have collapsed and who knows if during our time we will get around to rebuilding them or not. But Tim has been particularly focused on a section of the wall on the eastern side of the chateau in the last couple of weeks. And I'm also intrigued to know exactly how long our stone walls are. So I'm gonna go and track him down and ask him to measure it up for us. All right, so I'm just gonna try and work out exactly what the length of our stone walls around the estate are. And I think I'll start at the northern end. The wall down here, which is punctuated by two ha-has. And then running up from there, it gets a little bit more complicated. It runs to the corner here, it's another about 41 centimetres, minusing off the gate. 77 or 77 and a half, let's just say 77. And then at the southern end, this is relatively easy. 34 centimetres, southern end. 57 and 75. 57 and 75. Now that will give us a figure for the entire external walls of the chateau. And then we need to do a measurement down here in the Potager garden and at the back of the Moulin Bigiard. So we've got well well over two kilometres um, of, of walls that have to be cleared and maintained. And we've seen that from the work we've been doing down on this wall, it's very, very slow progress to do it comprehensively. But there are large sections that are in very, very good condition and need very little maintenance right now at all. 
um, but there are others that have been extensively damaged and degraded. So, got a big task ahead of us. You better get to work, babe. Like everything at the Chateau, it always turns out to be more than you think it is. One of the least glamorous jobs here at Pernon is going to be cleaning all these walls. And we have to clean them. We've got, we calculate probably just over two kilometers of them. And if we don't maintain them and protect them, they do fall down in sections. And the thing that makes them fall down is basically the inundation of rainwater through the top and so even though the most visually satisfying task is clearing the walls themselves the most important part of it is actually to clear what's on the the the, the top or the cap of the roof uh, of the wall rather if we don't do that then the dirt gets in the rainwater gets in and it just completely undermines the stability and the integrity of the wall and then in a few years the wall just falls over in different sections and they're quite expensive to repair. We're going to have to do a bit of an appraisal of all of our walls and in places like this where it's obvious what needs to be done get to work clearing them. Some of it can be done, has to be done by hand, some of it can be done with the, um, with the trimmers and we can cut and reduce the bulk of it. There's just a lot more on the wall than you realise and it just takes a long time and I know sometimes people say, look, just go and poison it with a herbicide, but we just don't really want that in our park. And, you know, we're trying to be good neighbours, look out for the farmers around us, and we just don't want to pour chemicals and herbicides on our, um, on our walls. We care about our own health. We care about the health of the people working around us. And we care about the planet's health. So... We'll do as much of it as we can by hand. And it's gonna take a long time. Well, it looks like I may have lost him for quite some time to the task of devegetating the stone walls of the chateau. But back here at the Haha -ha at the front of the chateau with the 1812 gates, you can see the poor condition of the stonework here. The rain infiltration is its absolute biggest menace and the stonework has started to collapse and the wall is actually buckled. So it's quite urgent that we start the work to repair, protect and restore the haha -ha here at the front of the chateau. And it's our goal to restore the beautiful 1812 gates at the same time. And this is the whole reason that we started our Patreon account. 
Every single cent that comes to us from Patreon will be used to help us restore and protect these beautiful stone walls at the Ha Ha in front of the Chateau and the 1812 gates. And so if you would like to play a part in the restoration of the Ha Ha here and the 1812 gates, we would absolutely love to see you over on Patreon where we also do an exclusive video every single Saturday. But for now, I'm getting absolutely saturated and I'm freezing cold, so I'm gonna get in out of this terrible weather and we will see you guys soon.